Teaching D and D to kids. Okay, boyos, we've been talking about Dungeons and Dragons. If you've been following this channel at all, I've been teaching Dungeons and Dragons to a bunch of nine-year-olds um, at one school and eleven-year-olds at another. So the nine-year-olds at this school that I taught the last class, we had six classes. So what I did was I ran a class, I ran a dungeon, and then they all got to. Um, run their dungeons. So I gave them graph paper. They loved it. They drew their own dungeons, right? That was awesome. And then they each got to run their own. So, so finally, the fifth kid, I have five students in the class, his name was Liam. He got to run his dungeon, and he had uh, given me his dungeon paper to keep. I lost it last week. I found it. Uh, so he, I put down the map. He got to draw on the, on the, uh, the map. I have a big, uh, it's in the car, I think, still. Um, uh, just like a dry erase marker map with the. Uh... Can I put that on there? Yeah, here it is. So, um, yeah, in fact, his map might still be on it. I'll give you a link in the description. You can buy these online. These are pretty cool. So, uh, each one of these is a one inch square, and so it helps you with distances and that sort of thing. They have different textures on them. This one has a kind of a flagstone kind of thing. This one has more of a mosaic tile kind of thing going on here. Anyway, he, he drew this map. It's not this one here. This was a different kid. So he had us go in and the first, and we had no weapons. And, he's, and he prefaced it by saying that we were in the streets with no money and we were given the option to either die poor or go on this adventure and possibly be killed. And so it sounded like squid game to me. But one of the other kids had come up with that last week. Oh, why am I wearing these stupid sunglasses? Because I'm trying to get your attention. Uh, and so uh, they, yeah, so he, so that was the premise. And so we go into the dungeon and I had little figurines for them to, to push around the table. I think that's very important for the kids, the... The, using their imagination, drawing their own like rooms, and even if they can't quite figure out how to make a balanced adventure, at least like letting them use their imaginations and actually drawing with the markers and using little figures to represent them, that was very important to them. To them, it was more like a board game. They wanted to be able to move so many feet. You're starting to get the mechanics of the dice rolls and the challenges and things sort of. They're obviously not doing the math. You know, we're not doing like attacks and effects and things, spell effects and things like that. But anyway, we go in the first room and it's a uh, an armory, right? So we can get our weapons. So we get weapons and then um, so, so we each get to pick our weapons. And they're making up these hilarious weapons. So the one kid's real technical and he's talking about basically like an LMG with... A uh, bandolier full of bullets and this sort of thing, and I'm thinking there's no way that like the Liam who's running the dungeon is going to approve this. And he's like, yeah, sure, no problem. And then the other kid wants a sword that's like a lightsaber, but it's not really a lightsaber because that would be too OP, and he can throw it like a boomerang, and so all this kind of stuff is really, really very uh, clever. Eventually, we get to a point where, well, of course, the one kid he you know has to pretend that he's like gonna go pee in a corner. So like, you know, they're nine-year-olds. Uh, they're fascinated by f bad words and and bodily functions. It's really, um, you know, I don't know. Was I like that when I was that age? Uh, maybe, I don't remember. But uh, yeah, that's what you're dealing with. So trying to keep the game on track was a challenge. Uh, so, Finally, we, what we did, but by the end, they were all like kind of taking turns and sitting down and going in order. And um, we each got a turn. There was a uh, uh, hallway where two people went down and got cut in half, but then somehow they got healed again. It turns out there were a whole bunch of like pendulum, uh, pit the pendulum kind of like swinging axes going on, swinging blades. So we had to get past those. Then we got to a room, and the room was this luxurious room with uh, beds and a fireplace. And the one kid was like, I'm not getting in that bed because I think it's a mimic. 
and uh, turned out it wasn't a mimic, but that was really cool because we had a mimic in one of our uh, books that we were going through that they were when I was trying to show them how to set up uh, monsters and things. So that was interesting. And then, um, yeah, uh, we get this luxurious room. I'm like, well, I'm going to eat. I'm going to sit by the fire. And then we go down the final hallway. I said, you know, we're running out of time. You got to like, because we only had an hour. You got to get to the exit. And so at Liam at the end, everybody gets like a huge house and a opulent mansion at the end. And we all live happily ever after. So that was a nice ending. So he didn't kill us off, uh, except for a couple of people got cut in half and then healed. So anyway, I just wanted to recount that. I don't know if this is going to help anybody. I just wanted to recount it more or less for myself as a journal entry. Uh, so, yeah, ask me questions about teaching kids how to play d and I think I read that D&D is recommended for kids 12 and up, and I can sort of see why now. Because younger than that, you got to kind of simplify the rule set. And so it's kind of a modified version of D&D. And then uh, I also did Adventure League uh, last night, too, and I was the DM. So I'll tell you all about that in the next video. So subscribe. You can see that. And uh, leave me comments. I answer comments. I'm crazy like that. I answer everybody's comments. So if you have any questions, see that there. And likes are great for me. And i see you on the next one. Oh, by the way, there's a link in the description if you want to get something off of Amazon. That might help me a little bit. I'll get a little bit of money. It doesn't cost you anything. And there's a lightsaber that I just reviewed. And it's like pretty awesome. And uh, I'm like putting a link on all my videos because if you buy this, these guys will give me like, like a 20% finder's fee. So I'm pretty happy about that. All right. I'll see you all in the next one. Have a great day. May the force be with you. Keep on dungeoneering.